Wall Street will get earnings reports from Wells Fargo this morning. So far, earnings from the big banks have been mixed. JP Morgan had better than expected profits, but Citigroup and Bank of America both lost money. Congress will get a report card on the bailout of the financial industry today, and the news is not expected to be good. General Motors will release its first quarterly earnings report this morning since emerging from bankruptcy. Some analysts are predicting improved results with GM possibly coming close to breaking even. AP is reporting the Detroit automaker will also begin paying back $6.7 billion in U.S. government loans by the end of this year and could pay off the full amount by 2011. That would be four years ahead of schedule. The Dow suffered its biggest sell-off in months after reports showed that consumer confidence and spending were down. On Friday, the Dow plunged about 250 points, ending the month of October flat. The Nasdaq fell 52 and had its first losing month since February. CIT Group filed for bankruptcy protection in a New York court Sunday after months of reported trouble. The 101-year-old business is a lender to thousands of small and medium-sized businesses around the country, including many of the country's major retailers. The Big Three report their October sales today, and Wall Street is hoping that the worst of the U.S. auto industry's troubles are over. Ford surprised investors yesterday by reporting a nearly billion-dollar profit. Analysts predict American car makers sold more than 10 million vehicles last month. That would be the best sales of the year, not counting the Cash for Clunkers program. Still, Asian stocks were mostly lower today as doubts linger about the strength of the U.S. economy. However, better than expected news on manufacturing, construction, and housing put American investors in a buying mood Monday. The Dow jumped 76 points. The Nasdaq gained four. The Federal Reserve kicks off a two-day meeting on interest rates today. With inflation under control, the Fed is expected to leave short-term rates unchanged at a record low of near zero. Back home, investors are waiting to hear from the Federal Reserve today about the state of the economy. Yesterday, the Dow dipped 17 points while the Nasdaq was up eight. Chrysler unveils a new five-year business plan today. The struggling automaker will roll out a new product line with its new Italian partner, Fiat. It includes an Alfa Romeo SUV and a smaller Fiat 500 that's popular over in Europe. Meanwhile, Ford is reporting sales rose 3% in October, while GM saw sales climb nearly 5%. This morning, we'll find out how many new homes are being built. Analysts do expect to see an increase. That would indicate a continuing recovery in the housing market. We'll also get earnings reports from Coca-Cola, Pfizer, and Yahoo. College costs just keep on rising. The average tuition at a four-year public college is up 6.5% this fall. We'll also get earnings reports this week from several big names retailers including Saks, Target, Home Depot, and Lowe's. With consumer sentiment falling for the second straight month, retailers are bracing for a tough holiday shopping season and already offering deep discounts. Experts say the best deals will be on electronics, smaller LCD TVs, and some large plasma televisions. And some of the biggest U.S. charities are also expecting a disappointing holiday season due to the slumping economy. A survey by Harris Interactive finds only 38% of Americans and say they are more likely to give a charitable gift as a holiday present this year compared to nearly 50% last year. If you're planning to fly around the holidays, the price just went up. Most airlines have increased a surcharge from $10 to now $20 each way for the busiest travel days, including Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Travel experts warn that this new surcharge is likely to continue after the holidays. On Wall Street, the Dow hit another new high for the year, gaining 20 20 points Tuesday, the Nasdaq fell three. Well, the flood of cheap foreclosures continues to hurt home values. According to the National Association of Realtors, that pushed the median sales price down just under $178,000, 11% lower than a year ago. First off, I just can't give somebody a lousy tip. I feel too bad. And secondly, I think it'd be a really bad idea to give your hairstylist a lousy tip because <laughs> you don't know what they might do to your hair as a payback. Whenever I'm at the pump and it costs a whole lot to fill it up, I do think twice about how much I'm spending when I go shopping. Target is jumping right into the online book price wars. Target slashed prices on seven highly anticipated hardcover books to $8.99. 
Target is competing with the lowered price that Walmart.com just set for 10 expected bestsellers. Disney is headed to China. China's planning agency has approved plans for a Disney theme park in Shanghai. It will include a Magic Kingdom with characteristics tailored to the region. Disney opened a theme park in Hong Kong four years ago, which has experienced poor attendance, raising concerns on Disney's potential for success in Shanghai. And if you're a T-Mobile customer, you're probably hoping for a better day today. About 5% of the wireless company's customers had trouble calling and texting yesterday. However, this morning on Twitter, T-Mobile says everyone's service has now been restored. And it's funny, guys, you remember when no one really even had cell phones? The drop-side cribs at this Louisiana daycare center make it easier for the employees to lift babies in and out. Now all the cribs must be repaired to keep the children safe. We need to make sure that nobody else is hurt or injured. A company called Stork Craft makes the more than two million drop-side cribs that have been recalled. The problem involves plastic hardware that can break, causing the side rail to detach from the crib, creating a space big enough for an infant to become trapped and suffocate. Four children have died. Baby stores, along with the Consumer Product Safety Commission, say drop-side cribs like this one are likely on the way out in favor of fixed-side cribs like this without any movable parts. If we design the crib at this level, then we don't need a moving side because the whole crib is designed and functioning at a lower level so that we just come to the crib and reach in. The recalled cribs were manufactured between January 1993 to October 2009, some carrying the Fisher Price logo. The head of the CPSC says in some cases the cribs were assembled wrong, but also admitted the recall should not have taken 16 years. We have just not been uh, acting as quickly as we should have at the Consumer Product Safety Commission on these type of instances. Parents are advised to contact Stork Craft for a free repair kit and to stop using the cribs until they get it. Ashley Morrison, CBS News, New York.